This week's episode is sponsored by Daily Puzzles. Chess. Chess. The most popular game. For more than a thousand years, it has gone, relatively speaking, without drama. Until now. Here's a recap. In September 2022, during the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, the current reigning world champion and arguably the greatest chess player of all time, Magnus Carlsen, lost a game of chess. Nothing unusual here, chess tournaments consist of many games, losses are common, except Magnus was playing as white. White moves first remember, and in the upper echelons of chess, this matters. Magnus doesn't lose as white. In fact, to put into perspective how unusual this defeat was, here's a list of all the people who have beaten Magnus using the black pieces. Ever. The victor was, at the time, relatively unknown grandmaster Hans Niemann, a 19-year-old American chess prodigy whose rating, although it had been rising quickly, was much lower than Magnus's. But upsets do happen, and the tournament continued. That was until Magnus abruptly withdrew from the tournament, leaving this cryptic tweet as his only explanation of why. Really not to, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble in big trouble, and I don't want to be in big trouble. What did it mean? What is he saying? Why did he quit? People began to speculate. Yeah, he has withdrawn. You know, that it's a there young man who just pulled off the I've withdrawn from the tournament. I've always enjoyed playing St. Louis. I was supposed to be back in the future. Not count for During the interview. Stand- Two weeks later, Magnus and Neiman met again, this time in an online tournament. Would Magnus avenge his loss? No. Sorry, Alejandro, I just have to interrupt you uh, because the game started. Um, and Magnus has logged off. What has happened? Magnus has resigned. Magnus has resigned the game wow. against Hans Niemann. He resigns after one move, essentially confirming everyone's speculations. Magnus Carlsen is accusing Hans Niemann of cheating. He later solidified his position. The internet went berserk. Changed his Instagram profile okay. to say Wait, did he just literally say I don't- What does this mean? Is Hans a cheater? Hans is a cheater. Or look at this strange interview. How would you summarize it? Chess speaks for itself. Is it something special doing this against Magnus, Hans? This proves everything. To make matters worse, Hans has actually admitted to online cheating in his youth. So I cheated in random games on chess.com. And chess.com say he has cheated. Lots online. But over the board is a different matter. How is that even possible? The speculation continues. You'll think he's using anal beads Morse code! <laughs> Dude! 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 Chess tra- Grandmaster is cheating he's by using, using anal, anal beads Morse code! One idea seems to stick. Elon Musk gets involved. That's how he did it. It all makes sense. Hans said he'd play in the nude to disprove the theory. They want me to strip fully naked? I'll do it, I don't care. And strip chat even offered him $1 million to do so on their site. We're still waiting for that. Hans' reputation is in tatters, and his career may be irreparably damaged. He's filed a $1 million lawsuit in the meantime. And it should be noted, at the time of writing, not a shred of evidence of over-the-board cheating has been brought forward. I'll let you ponder the ethics of the situation. But the idea of using a sex toy to beat the world's greatest at chess has captivated the chess world and the general public. Could it be done? How would it work? And where can I get one? Well, let's find out. To begin with, I thought it'd be easiest to modify an existing device to suit my needs. And hey, this is tax deductible. It seemed like it would be simple enough to just hack the remote of this wireless plug to quickly turn on and off to transmit chess moves. Easy. Except this one's fancy. It has all kinds of different modes, pulsing at 10 different speeds, different intensities. What happened to the good old on and off switch? This means I need to make my own controller. I'll harvest the battery and vibration motor for now. All right, electronics montage.
Okay, here's the deal. We have two Arduinos, a receiver and a transmitter and a little bit of code on the computer that sends a signal to this Arduino. So when I plug it in, it vibrates and it, I've just set it to vibrate a little pulse. So you could imagine that that would translate to some sort of chess move. However, this monstrosity of wires and solder doesn't fit into the original device. That's a problem. How is it supposed to go up your butt? So we need a bigger container. This one should do the trick. I hauled out a space for the components, only took about four hours. However, it's still way too loud. Even if it was in situ, you'd hear that. This tiny phone vibration motor is quieter and much smaller. All right, here it is. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> the super glue, uh, I thought the super glue would be seamless, but that is not the case. But look, it's a switch. And can you hear that? So it works. It's not very uh, inviting, <laughs> but it's functionally working. Now that I have a tiny computer that can control a vibration motor, I need a way to transmit the perfect chess move. So I need some code. I need to write a program that, based on the position of all the pieces, calculates the perfect move. It'll need a user interface with a chessboard on screen so you can click and move pieces around. It needs to consider all the nuanced rules of chess like castling and en passant, and it needs to interface with Stockfish 15 for the strongest chess analysis. Right. Modifying this Python program to talk to the Arduino was simple and amazingly only required four lines of code. Got a lot of open source. The program uses Stockfish as the engine and relays the move over a serial connection to the transmitter. On receiving the move, the butt Arduino converts the string into a series of pulses that convey the move to make. I'm glossing over this and it took me like 14 hours to debug this Arduino code, but it works. Okay, here's how this is supposed to work. I've got the PC running the Python code with Stockfish calculating the ideal move, and I've got a transmitter. This sends the signal to the plug wirelessly, which then pulses to indicate which move to make. So if I play, I'm playing against the computer here, if I play the move E4, then the computer will probably play E5. Yes, it has. It'll give me two pieces of information. It'll buzz the square that the piece is currently on and the square that it wants to go on. It just converts the numbers to letters. So A is one, B is two, C is three, for example. And then the, the numbers just stay as they are. So it'll pulse twice for B and three times for three. So it does file, then rank, then file, then rank. And it'll repeat that every 30 seconds just in case I miss the move and I need to reiterate it, or I'm not sure what it did. It's really quiet, but still audible. I felt the vibration motor was still too loud. Interestingly, I was able to fix this in software by reducing the pulse time to just 15 milliseconds. This means that the motor doesn't even have enough time to spin up fully, keeping it super quiet. So with the reduced pulse duration of 15 milliseconds, it is buzzing right now, it is essentially completely silent and you can just feel it. If this was somewhere a little more sensitive, you would definitely feel it and you definitely wouldn't hear it. So I think we're pretty much good to go. God, it looks hideous. Right, time to put it to the test. The question is, can this device that's made by a programming and electronics noob in just a couple of days actually be used to cheat at chess over the board? Will it raise suspicion? Will it run out of battery? Will I interpret the moves correctly? To find out, we've brought in an unaware chess virtuoso. This is Michael Groves, and he's good at chess. He has a rating of 2300. My rating, even on chess.com, is a pathetic 600. In any conceivable scenario, Michael will crush me at chess. Let's see how he gets on. 
Okay, so Michael, the chess player who is my, going to be my opponent, um, he's a very good chess player. He's coming in um, about 20 minutes. So it's time to put the device into its uh, functional position. Um, I'd rather do this in private, so excuse me one moment. Quite uncomfortable. You want to see? Yeah. Come on, this is a family show. What were you expecting? For the first game, I decided to play with the device switched off. Hey, you never know. What's that? But pretty quickly I gave away a pawn and then another one. Being very generous. <laughs> Before inevitably things started to fall apart. Okay. I take this back. No. <laughs> so it's not atrocious or no actually it's quite bad. Check me. <laughs> Shaq Matt. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> well After such a crushing defeat, Michael was initially confused as to why I demanded an immediate rematch, but he obliged. This time, however, would be different. Should we shake hands to do it officially? Yeah, of course. This means game on. Game on, sorry, I've got sweaty hands. That's okay. Don't be nervous. <laughs> so here, Kim is operating the camera and we've said she's also recording the game on chess.com on the laptop for analysis later. Michael didn't seem to think that was strange, so no suspicion so far. That's a good move. I was receiving the moves perfectly and, as expected, Stockfish played the ideal opening, with no suspicion aroused so far. <laughs> It's good, everything you've done so far is absolutely solid. You've got a good position here. I need to undermine somehow. But you've played this game better than the, the last game. Mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. Right, you've played really well. Good move. As things went on, Michael got a little more tense. Yeah, I didn't want you to do that. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm not happy at all. No? No. <laughs> I'm really not happy about it. Do you know what? This is intense as heck. <laughs> yeah, no, I am getting a little bit skeptical now that this is a big cheating scandal exercise. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping you make a mistake soon, eh? Amazingly, it wasn't until move 27 where he actually dropped any material. Just a single pawn. That's the distant look of all. This is a f right off, isn't it? <laughs> Oh man, this is too much. I'm feeling like I'm the one getting the lesson here. Okay, I didn't think that was coming. Eventually, however, Michael began to suspect something was up. Right, this is bull <laughs> You're definitely cheating or something, because you're holding on by a thread. <laughs> What do you mean I'm holding on my thread? There's little tactics that each time they just don't work. See, that doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah, so that's a really good move. What? This is a good move? Yeah. Alright, yeah. <laughs> that's why I played it. <laughs> yeah, it is.
If you've only got 600 rapid rate and you're doing pretty well with this game. <laughs> Despite being in a much worse position, Michael played on, waiting for a mistake that never came. Quite a good understand the end game theory you've got here. <laughs> what can you do? I just accuse you of cheating after on Twitter. Would you resign in a tournament? Yeah. I, you should. We should just resign now. Yeah. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Did you have a bit of outside assistance? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> This has been your <laughs> weapon of choice. <laughs> That's been my weapon of choice. Did you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's been a range of emotions right there. I, but, but this is what I didn't get. The first game you blundered your H3 pawn. Cool. And what, is she the sending the moves? Yeah. Yeah. So she was just recording the game and, the, and Python just... So there we have it. Michael knew I was cheating, but not because he could hear the device or he figured out how we were doing it. My play was simply too strong for my rating. But what I feel I've shown in this video is that it's easy to make a silent, concealable cheat device with minimal electronics and coding knowledge, and it can be used to beat really high level players. Did Hans cheat and did Magnus and Chess.com handle the situation properly? That's not for me to say. All I can tell you is, the meme is real, and it can be done. And perhaps more should be done in over the board chess to prevent this kind of thing. If you've watched this video up until now, then you are a nerd. Which is ideal, because this week's sponsor is Daily Puzzles. That's that crazy company that sent me 3000 Rubik's Cubes so I could build that monstrosity behind me. Yes, all of those really are made up of Rubik's Cubes. If you haven't heard of speed cubing, that's solving Rubik's Cube type twisty puzzles really fast, go watch Speed Cubers on Netflix and get into this in 2023. It's been amazingly beneficial to me to get away from phone screens and stay sharp. Daily Puzzles is the number one speed cubing store in the world. They stock over 1000 puzzles. My favourite is the 11 by 11 cube. Yep, that's 11 by 11 by 11 pieces. This took me five hours to solve but they stock every conceivable version of a twisty puzzle. So if you're thinking of solving the standard Rubik's Cube for the first time this year, or you're a seasoned pro wanting the very best speed cube or a new challenge, go check them out. They ship everywhere in the world with international shipping starting at just five US dollars. But if you hurry and use the code Mike at checkout, you'll get 15% off your entire order. And by doing that, you'll also be helping to support this show. Also, if you are looking for a gift for someone who loves cubing or someone who might like cubing, then check out these mosaic blocks from GAN. They will allow you to make an image out of Rubik's Cubes just like the one behind me, maybe using a few less cubes. Thank you very much to Daily Puzzles for supporting this show and thanks very much to you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>